Hi guys, today we will assemble the kit version of this WPL C14 Toyota Hilux Crawler. The kit version comes with a better motor than the ready to run version and with a standard 3 pin steering servo. The used receiver slash ESC comes from a WL Toys K989 rally car and fits perfectly. The SDL data for all 3D printed parts in this video can be found on my Thingiverse page. I don't like the galvanized frame, so I decided to paint it in black. After some sanding and degreasing, we are ready to paint. The next step is to assemble the axles. They jammed a bit and I had to slightly shorten the joint. The grease for the bushings is included. This is the front axle and you can see the steering dog bones. The crown gear touches the axle housing, so we have to remove a bit of the housing. Now it's turning nice and free and we can grease and mount the bevel gear. The next step is to do the same with the rear axle. Both axles are done. The steering linkages are now installed. Next step Assembling the axle carriers and the shocks. The spring is inside the shock and you can replace it if you remove the top cover. The pre-assembled suspensions can now be attached to the freshly painted frame rails. Here you can also see the motor, the steering servo and the central gearbox. Both frame rails are now screwed together and the result is a nice and sturdy frame. The next step is to attach the axle linkages to the frame. The screws which are used to mount the axle to the carrier are too long. So I 3D printed some spacers and added them below the screw heads. The same procedure is done for both axles. The frame and the suspensions are now finished. The suspension works fine. Next step, mounting the central gearbox. The included tires are nice and soft, so let's mount them. Now we want to mount the steering servo which came with the kit. To mount the servo horn we have to move it to the center position first. A servo tester is used to do that. A servo mounting screw and a grommet which came with the kit are used to connect the steering linkage. But it doesn't really fit good, so I decided to 3D print my own servo horn. To keep the servo horn in the right orientation I filed a flat to the servo shaft. The grommet and the bushing go into the bore of the steering linkage. The servo horn is attached to the servo shaft and to the steering linkage. The entire steering mechanism is now assembled. Time for a test. The movement is still a bit too much with plus minus 45 degree servo angle. This receiver slash ESC was left over from my K989 micro RC conversion. I assume it will be perfect for this car. So let's wire it up and see what it does. Looks good. Thanks to the adjustable throttle tool rate, it's perfect for crawling. But will it crawl? Let's test it. Okay. 
Something is wrong here. But what? Yes, the headlight reflectors need some paint. Looks much, much better now. So now we can attach the front grill to the bumper. And then the bumper to the frame. I think it doesn't look too bad with the paint. Poor coke can car. Of course we want black windshield rubber seals. Now the steering servo needs to be attached. So I 3D printed this clamp. It fits perfectly to the servo which came with the kit. The next thing to do is to make the battery wiring harness. The piece on the left came from the K989. This is the test of the battery wiring. Now we want to branch off some 5 volt wires for the lights. They are soldered to the 5 volt supply pins of the receiver. This slot is required for the wires. Of course a crawler needs a waterproof receiver, so it is conformal coated. The coated receiver is now ready for reassembling. And now it's ready to be mounted in the car. A 100 nanofarad noise suppression capacitor is soldered across the motor terminals. The receiver is then attached to the servo clamp and the motor wiring is finished. This is the finished motor wiring. Next step, routing and securing the battery wiring. The motor was not inserted deep enough in the gearbox and the result was a grinding noise. Removing a bit of the housing allows to push it in deep enough for a proper gear mesh. To prevent it from sliding out again, it's secured with super glue. Now we are ready to mount the bed on the frame. To make some room for the wiring, we have to dremel two slots in the front cover. Here you can see why the slots are required. Of course we also want working rooftop lights. All four LED are wired in parallel. The next step is to solder the wires and to protect them with shrink tube. Again a slot is required to root the wires. Finally. The wiring is secured with zip ties. Next step, painting the LED wires in black. Of course, this windows rubber gasket also needs to be black. The entire rear wall can now be attached to the bed. A small hole is required to root the LED wires. The DIY Guy 999 Junior is now finishing the body. Of course we also want working headlights, so let's prepare a 5 volt distributor board. Fits nicely on existing mounting posts. The 5 volt supply wires are now attached. Nice working rooftop lights. 
They are wired with a 100 ohm series resistor. Next, soldering wires to the headlight LED and protect them with heat shrink. The LED are then secured with hot glue. The wire ends are now stripped and soldered to the distributor board. The series resistor value is 220 ohms. Of course, the distributor board also needs to be waterproof. Here you can see the details of the 5 volt distributor board. The electronics are now finished and we are ready to mount the cover. The cover is secured with two screws. These headlights are really nice looking. Time to mount the body. It is attached with a total of six screws. That's it. Doesn't look bad at all. I wasn't entirely happy with the steering, so I decided to design and 3D print a new shorter servo arm and a new longer steering linkage. The new parts allow a symmetrical steering angle. Finally I glued the bevel gear shaft pushing and shortened the rear prop shaft about 1 mm. So now we are ready for the first real outdoor test drive. Let's plug in the LiPo battery. Will it explode? Yes, it's a crawler. This is top speed. So, it should have off-road capabilities, right? Thanks to the waterproof electronics, water is no problem. But will it like snow? Wow, this is really respectable for a 116 scale. I hope this little tutorial was helpful for you. The K989 receiver seems to be the perfect choice and makes this build really easy. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Bye!